Uriah Hall versus Yoel Romero. This fight is really gaining some traction. I loved it from the day that I saw it, but I am noticing you guys love it too. And Uriah Hall came out and he said, I beat Yoel Romero. Give me a title shot against Adesanya. So I started looking at the division. In full disclosure for anybody who's just tuning in, Uriah is my ace. I mean, whatever, whatever Uriah wants is, is what I'm going to want and what I will then hope that I could extend and get you guys to want. But I will tell you, as I started to look at that division and that call out, I don't know of a time that Uriah Hall has ever called for a title fight. And his career has been up and down. Yeah, sure. But you go look at the guys that he was in there with. You look at the meaningful fights. I mean, come on, he fought Whitaker before Whitaker was Whitaker. He fought Paulo Costa before Paulo Costa with Paulo Costa. He fought Kelvin Gaslam the night that Gaslam became Gaslam. I mean, just by example, these guys have all gone on to fight for championships or to win world championships. And Uriah's going, man, I fought these same guys. Where's my champ? He goes in there and fights Musasi. I mean, these, these are just coming to me off the top of my head. It, it's been a long, hard career. And when you do look at the middleweight division, the very first thing that you need somebody to do, somebody in this case being Uriah, is to raise their hand and say, put me in. Very first thing you need to do. That division is a very bit unclear right now, aside from the fact that it's going to be Anasanya versus Paulo for the title. We understand that, but that division's very bizarre. What happens with Whitaker and Till? Very tough to say since Whitaker's the favorite. He's already been matched up with Adesanya. Till, though brand new to the weight class, is undefeated within the weight class. And a win over the former champion, it's going to mean something. But I think you understand my point. I make a very fair point to talk about this is, this is getting formed. When is Anderson coming back? Is Rockhold coming back? What's going to happen when Weidman comes back? Weidman and Rockhold both at one point had left the division. Really put it into a tailspin. Gatslam gets upset. Till joins the division. See what I'm saying? It's a mess right now. And if Uriah wants to step forward and go, look, if it was good for the goose, it's good for the gander. You're telling me that Yoel Romero got to fight for a couple, three championships. Then I'm telling you, I beat him. I get to take his place. That's kind of the way it works. I mean, I see Uriah's point, even if I haven't convinced you of the math. Okay, fine. But let's take a look at that fight because stylistically, Adesanya versus Uriah Hall, in many ways, is Adesanya's hardest match. In many ways. He's going to fight somebody that is much like him. He's going to fight somebody that has these really rare defenses that can do what we call the pull. There's only a few ways to slip a shot, right? You can either eat a shot by rolling with it and fire back. You can duck a shot. You can slip a shot. Or if you're an extremely high-level athlete, Floyd Mayweather, Roy Jones Jr., Anderson Silva, Adesanya, Uriah Hall, I challenge you to offer me somebody else that can actually pull back. Their back bends his way. They can pull back and a kick can go flying past their face. A punch can go flying back, boom, boom, they fire back. It's, I mean, it's a very interesting thing, but it also represents a level of athleticism. If you ever see an athlete live in combat that can defend a strike of any kind by doing the pull, it's another level of athleticism. And there's a few things that if you're a coach, you can just look to and identify a great athlete, right? You can put them all on a pull-up bar and say, go until you're tired and see the last one hang. I mean, there's things that you can do. But if you find an athlete that knows how to do this one technique, I mean, I'm telling you, really, it's that big of a deal. You find somebody that has timing and has that level of flexibility and can do that in live sport, it's very rare. And when you do look at these two guys, that is a compelling match. Adesanya versus Hall is a compelling match. Anybody versus Adesanya that's going to go stand up with him is in for a long night. But anybody versus Uriah that's going to go stand up with him is in for a long night. And that's both of these guys' game. I think in many ways, even when you look at Otis, or I apologize, Yoel versus Uriah, and you do have to default that Yoel, while being a great wrestler and having a great resume, that was 20 years ago. And he just simply has not used that in the next chapter of his life, which is his MMA career. He just doesn't use that wrestling except for defensively. He's one of these guys... He grew up in a family. He went on to be an Olympic wrestler. His brother went on to be an Olympic boxer. So much like the brother probably looked at him and thought the grass was greener on the other side, it seems like Yoel must have thought that ab about brother. I wanted to be a boxer because that's what he, he's gone out and done. And so he's going to go out and stand with Uriah Hall by all evidence we have. That's never really worked out for anybody. 
It's a really interesting match. And for Uriah to make the claim, particularly in a three-round fight, Yoel's two different fighters in three rounds versus five rounds. In fairness, everybody is. It's a different fight. But Yoel, who is typically a very slow starter and tries to rope-a-dope you, Uriah Hall's just a hard guy to rope-a-dope because he's a hard guy to touch.